So I'm on Explore and I'm just walking towards the tar steps. This wasn't actually a planned video, but I've had a couple of days doing some nice walks in the countryside with my camera and tripod. So I thought I'd share my experience with you and talk a little bit about how I took the photos. Quite a nice day today after being so wet and rainy for a while. So, did I mention it's Christmas Eve? When I'm not doing school photography or photos for commercial businesses, I like to look at what areas of photography I can experiment with, improve on, or things I can challenge myself with. And I'd recently decided to buy a circular polarizing filter and a neutral density filter because I wanted to play around a bit more with photographing uh, water using long exposures and also just some more um, outdoors type photography. The clips and photos in this video, they're not actually all in chronological order, but more or less they are. Uh, but this photo of a signpost, just a, a short walk away from the tar steps. So this was, uh, yeah, very close to the start of the walk that I did that day on Christmas Eve. And I, I did actually go the wrong way. There was a one-way system in place, which I hadn't noticed. Uh, but being Christmas Eve, it was pretty quiet, so it wasn't really a problem. But whenever I am taking photos like this, uh, as I'm walking along a track, I'm trying to look up, look down, um, you know, get down at a low angle and look at di things in different ways, trying to look where the light's coming from, what the light's shining on, what shadows there are, uh, trying to envisage in my mind what I can do with the colours later on, uh, composition, um, leading lines, depth of field. There's, you know, loads of things to think about. So it's probably just as well that I was doing this walk on my own because I think if I was doing it with anyone else, I'd probably drive them a bit crazy stopping all the time. I'd somewhat missed a trick really because I should have done this walk when it was autumn time, when the, the leaves are only just starting to fall off. So, you know, I've come a bit late and all the leaves are already on the ground. Um, and the, although in this photo the light is quite nice, most of the day it was fairly overcast. But uh, I am of the opinion that, yes, of course you can get up early and, um, you know, get there for morning light and... and go to all sorts of extremes and lengths to get the photos that you envisage but I try and just adapt to whatever I find whenever I'm there. I mean obviously you want to make the best of things as you can but quite often you can make some great photos uh, if you just look for those photos and um, this was quite fortunate. I was crossing a small bridge and uh, this was actually kind of tucked away a little bit behind um, some branches and bushes and things. So I just uh, came off the track for about half an hour or so and got a number of shots. And uh, this is one of the results of that, of that half an hour. And uh, this was uh, obviously camera on a tripod and I had an ND8 filter on the end of my lens. So that gave me some nice blur in the water as it flows down. And uh, I was shooting this on my Canon R5, which I haven't had too long and have been enjoying using. And uh, yeah, I was quite pleased with the results. Um, but I think, you know, there is a, a little bit of just a distraction with all of the twigs in the foreground and, you know, lights a bit kind of dappled. Um, so there's always room for improvement, but uh, this wasn't a bad start. So as you can see, I'm walking along on the higher side of the river now. I started on the lower side because I wanted to get some long exposure photos of the river. So I wanted to take that opportunity and that's how I ended up going on the wrong side against the one way system. But this is now heading back to the tar steps. So now I'm lower down closer to the river, I'm looking for opportunities for places of where I can get some long exposure photos. As well of course, just enjoying the scenery. So I wouldn't say this is one of my favourite photos, but um, this is one of a few long exposure photos that I took. And uh, it was, yeah, I was having a bit of a job really. I was trying to find 
areas on the ground which would make some interesting foreground interest. I'm not sure I 100% like this, um, but it is quite interesting and it's almost like an archaeological dig because it kind of looks like some bones are being dug up or something with all the, the roots crisscrossing around. But I think the grasses are a little bit distracting really and certainly the twigs on the right which if I wanted to I could remove. The water has probably got a bit too much motion in it. I've probably blurred it a bit too much. Um, but you get the idea, you know, it's all about experimentation, trying things out and comparing one photo to another. So I have got some photos further on in this video, which are a little bit better on this. So I was quite pleased with this simple photo. I almost didn't take it there actually, but I saw the trees with the moss and the bark and I was trying to envisage before I'd taken the photo, whether I would like the contrast between a milky water behind, you know, the, the blurred river compared to all the texture and detail of the tree trunks. And I think it worked quite well, actually, but I needed to really see it before I was convinced because beforehand I wasn't really too sure. But um, this has less distractions than the previous photo, which is one of the reasons why I like it. But as I say, I do like the contrast of the smooth water against all of the detail and just a simple composition really. It's definitely not an award-winning photo but it's one I'm quite happy with. And here's what it's like when you cross over the tar steps. Now the river I would say is probably quite high on this day. We had had quite a lot of rain recently so everywhere I was walking was boggy and wet. So I'd imagine it's very different in summertime but um, as I understand, some of these big stone slabs have actually been washed away previously and they've had to be put back in place or replaced. Now I'd imagine it's probably not necessarily to do with the sheer volume of water that has meant that they've washed away. It's probably more likely that some logs have floated down the river and dislodged them. But anyway, it's quite an uh, enjoyable crossing. And just so you can see, this is what it's like walking from the other direction. After a walk through all of the woodland and alongside the river, this was one of the last photos that I took. So my car was about 10 minutes walk away from this point. <clears throat> so I took a number of photos of this scene, uh, trying to perfect how the water looked and uh, get the right composition. So I took uh, lots of different variations of the composition, but this is the one that I prefer the most. It's just a little bit of a shame that uh, the weather was a little bit dull. Um, so I would have loved to have seen some light coming through. I mean, there was a point actually earlier where there was light coming through, but it just didn't seem quite right. Um, I certainly didn't really have much of a, a blue sky in the background. And obviously I haven't got leaves on the trees at this time of year. But uh, nevertheless, um, I'm quite happy with this image, but maybe I'll go back again and capture this scene again. And finally, time for a coffee. So we're now on the next day, Christmas Day. My plans for Christmas went a little bit awry, so rather than staying at home, I decided to go on another walk. I was actually quite tired from the previous day. Um, but this walk was not far from the Tar Steps one. This was actually a little bit south and about a mile away from Dulverton on Exmoor. It's the same river, Baal, and uh, I found uh, a nice area where, again, you, know, you can walk along the river 
and uh, it looked like he'd come along back on the other side as well. So this was uh, like literally where I parked my car. Uh, I thought it was a good start to the day to take a shot of this bridge with the river running through. So again, another long exposure on a tripod. And then shortly after that, I walked over the bridge and headed on walking down the side of the river. So after walking away from the car for about 10 to 15 minutes, I came across this scene, which I thought was quite an interesting one. It had all the elements that I was looking for, for a photo of this type. You've got the river coming along, you've got a nice moss covered tree, you've got a, a fallen down tree that's been cut up. And then you've got the track, the muddy track, which leads your eye away. And I've deliberately composed the image in a way that you get minimal sky because it's quite an overcast day you know, quite a white sky, it would be very distracting. So I like this photo and I think actually this photo is probably more successful than many of the ones the previous day. It's still a, a reasonably average photo, but I still think there's enough elements in it that make it quite satisfactory. So this photo is similar to the one I took the previous day. The one that I described it as looking a bit like an archaeological dig because you had like the bone-like structures in the ground. So this is quite similar to that, but I think it's more successful. Um, it's, I think, less worn than the previous photo from, you know, people walking about all over the ground. And uh, there's more moss, I think, and just the balance of the elements seems to work better. Um, there's, again, still room for improvement, um, but that's kind of a bit of luck of the draw to a certain extent when you're walking along these tracks and looking for uh, locations to photograph. But I quite like the balance of the elements in this photo and how it all holds together. Um, the grass and twigs and things aren't as distracting as the one I took the previous day. So this is uh, one of my more successful photos, I think. So I'm walking along this nice bridle path, going to some woodland now. Well, I've been kind of on the edge of woodland, but now I seem to be going into it and away from the river a little bit. I've got my camera with me, been taking a few photos on the tripod. I've recently got a um, neutral density filter, so I can take some nice long exposures of flowing water. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice actually, really nice day to come out. I've hardly seen anyone. It's just such a nice, remote, beautiful place. And I don't know how well it's a show on the camera, but everything is just so green. There's just moss everywhere. Very like New Zealand. I don't have to go to New Zealand because it's right here, an hour's drive away. This is really beautiful, actually. It's so peaceful. This is like, this is like doing the Milford track or something in New Zealand, which is a stunning, beautiful track. I might have to take some photos of this because this is just absolutely gorgeous. Got my camera set up here. I've just uh, taken a few shots and now I'm going to Get out of this mud, but it's, um, oof, blimey, rather thick and deep. Try not, oh god, this is it, rare, <laughs> pretty deep here. I'm gonna try not to fall over with my tripod and my phone and get back to my bag. It's just here. So, this is where the circular polarizer comes in handy. So the other photos where I'd had the long exposures of the water flowing, that was where I used a neutral density filter to cut out the light. So I don't need to be cutting out the light to get motion, obviously, in this photo. I wanted to cut out reflection of light on the water in front of me. So as I say, I use the circular polarizer to do that, and it also brings out the colours a little bit more in the moss. The idea of this photo was just to try and convey in a photo what I was seeing with my eyes in front of me because it was so beautiful, it was so green and lush and just a lovely environment. But I, I don't think it really gives the feel that I felt 
when I was there, enjoying the environment around me. Um, it certainly shows off the green, but I think the problem with this image is that the trees are planted in a very regimented fashion, so they're all in lines, and it does look a bit boring, but if nothing else, it's a nice memory of the day for me. So by this point, I decided it would be a good idea to walk through the forest and see what was on the other side. I mean, obviously, I'm walking up now to the River Bile, but uh, I wanted to see if there were any opportunities for some good viewpoints, uh, maybe some interesting overhanging trees or some interesting formations on the ground. Um, it could be anything. And also because it's not a very well trodden area i mean although i'm walking along a little bit of a path here there's not much going on in terms of human activity um so i figured that i might see something a bit more interesting when there have been less people there so looking up to the left here and see if i can uh, spot any good angles and oh, nearly fell over there. Just walk through this mud here. Maybe I'll go down the right here and see if I can see any good angles along the river. And actually, if you look in the distance there, there is a, a little bit of a stream joining the river. I should have spotted that. I could have put my long lens on and uh, maybe got a nice photo of that part of the river joining. I'm just walking back to my car now along the, I think it was called the Brawl River on Exmoor and uh, I've crossed over this well dodgy looking bridge. I was like tentatively walking over it because it looked like it was going to break any minute but I think it's fine. But loads of like rotten planks on it and some have been replaced with new ones and so because there are new ones I thought oh maybe it's fine then. But anyway so I've gone kind of a little bit off piste if you like because um, I'm not sure this is even a proper track. Maybe it's more of a route, I don't know, but... Well, actually, it's improving now, but I just the bit I just came through, it was like boggy and overgrown and grassy. But actually, this looks all right now. And hopefully it'll stay like this, but um, I was actually wondering if I'd made a, a bad decision crossing over. I didn't really want to be turning back myself on the same side, that'd be a bit boring. I think I could have actually walked a lot further, but it's um, uh, it's ten past two, and it starts to get dark about sort of half three-ish. And I think to get here, I took a, probably at least an hour. Although I did stop a lot, but so um, I'll head back, and then it won't be dark when I get back. As someone who doesn't often take landscape photos. I'm still developing an eye for what is a good scene and it's really easy to just walk past a perfectly good scene that would create a lovely photo. So you can often find that a great photo is right under your nose and you don't even notice, you walk straight past it. So I think that's why it's so important just to take your time to look around a lot, not look at your feet all the time as you're walking, but just try and assess what's around you and see if there is actually a photo there hidden away somewhere. So it's just as well I got some really good walking boots that are fully waterproof because, uh, well, look down here. Um, and that's quite deep.
to take a few more photos on a tripod. Um, not stopping quite as much though, because um, the light's fading a bit, but I don't think I'm terribly far away from the car now. Maybe a mile or so, but a mile or so is quite a long way when you're walking over muddy, boggy, undulating ground. So walking along the track, I quite liked it when I saw this scene. I thought this is quite interesting. Quite nice to see the little stream joining in the main part of the river. And uh, you've got a nice bit of fern in the foreground. And I've included a little bit of grass in the lower foreground as well. Um, so it works quite well as an image. But the only thing that does bother me a little is that you've got this kind of like island in the middle at the back. And uh, however I try to recompose to avoid it being so central, it just seemed to affect other parts of the image. So this is the best I could get, but I'm still quite pleased with how the water looks and the, the green and the fern and the, and the autumn sort of colors. So still walking through a lot of uh, scrub and um, muddy parts. And where I am now, the track is kind of disappeared a bit so I'm just kind of making my way along seeing what I can find in terms of some way through but um, it's a bit zigzaggy but there are a few places where I can see people have been like like here just over this mump little gap so that's there and uh, dodging a few trees here Nice sound of the river next to me all the time. A little trickle of a stream here to cross over. And back on more of a main track now. And right next to the river again. So, it's quite easy to walk. Uh, I think I'm only about 10 or 15 minutes away from the start of this if I started from the other side but it's been a great walk I've got some nice photos it's got a bit wet and actually <laughs> splashed it all over my trousers but they're quick drying so that's fine and uh, although these boots are waterproof it would be nice to switch to some trainers when I get back to the car but it'll certainly be easier to drive in I've got all of this stuff to step over now see I'm well, just basically walking through a little stream now yeah I'm actually walking down the stream now it's going to turn off some of it um yeah, this isn't um, as good a track as the other side. I don't mean that as a criticism. I mean, it's uh, it's not as easy to walk. It's, I think most people don't take this side. Whether or, not you're not, whether or not you're not supposed to, I don't know. But it's certainly fairly well worn, but uh, not as much as the other, other side of the river. All right. It's getting pretty hot. I've only got a t-shirt and a jacket, but it's quite a thick jacket. And uh, doing all this walking, I get really hot easily. Go for some thick mud now. But all this, you know, all this over here, really green and pretty. Um, yeah, not far away. It's not going to be not going to be dark when I get back, so that's good. But um, now I might have to do this walk again. It's been really fun, actually. So just driving back from um, Dolventon Way, where I did my walk, uh, I was passing by Wimberball Lake, which is where I am now, and couldn't help but notice how pretty the sky is. So I've got my camera set up down here on my tripod. I've taken a few shots already. Um, they're not amazing, but... Um, I'll tinker a bit on the computer and see how they look, but yeah, really beautiful, beautiful.
beautiful evening. So I might just stay here for a bit longer and see what happens with the sky. But even if nothing much changes, it's really relaxing and quiet here. All right, so I've got my camera on the tripod here. I've just changed lens, so I've got a telephoto lens on. And I've actually put a couple of filters on the end. Uh, one's a polarizing filter, one's a neutral density filter for anyone interested. But anyway, that knocks out a load of light and um, I can do a longer exposure. So I think it's about 13 second exposure. So I'm going to press this. So it's on a little timer, just so there's no camera shake. And uh, that's like two seconds. And then it's going to count for 13 seconds. And in a few seconds time, you'll be able to see what the fridge looks like. Red light's gone off, so safe to look. And it looks like that. It actually looks better on the camera than it shows in the background in real life. But with my eyes, it looks looks great. But looking on this phone, looking at the sky in the, on the phone doesn't look so great. But yeah, nice spot. So I really was very lucky to have such a nice sunset on the way home from an already really good day from a, a brilliant walk that I'd done. And uh, I just happened to be passing an area which was perfect for photos at just the right time. So you got a lovely lake, which was very calm and reflecting the sky beautifully. And it was easy for me to park and there was no one around. And it only took me, you know, a, a couple of minutes or so to set up my camera on my tripod and capture some photos. So the final photo of the day and what a beautiful day it's been. This lovely sunset photo showing the sky reflected beautifully in the water and all the colours and the shapes of the clouds in the sky. Now I did make one or two mistakes though. Uh, I focused on the reflection in the water and figuring that that would be a closer point in the image so the depth of field would extend to the background but what I didn't consider was that because it was a long exposure it meant that the reflection would actually be moving so it would be out of focus anyway and I found that the background was actually out of focus and not because of the depth of field but because I'd chosen like a 15th of a second. Now, although there was virtually no wind and I didn't move when I was taking the picture and I was careful about how I pressed the button on the camera and I had a, a little timer on there as well, there was clearly enough movement that it ruins the sharpness of the background. So lesson learned, maybe next time I'll hang something heavy off of the tripod uh, or I'll just go for a, a shorter exposure. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really would appreciate a thumbs up. That really massively helps me out, especially as a, a new YouTuber. And please do subscribe to my channel and I hope to be producing more videos like this in the future. Take care.